All right, the Volvo's back in the shop. It drove in under its own power with the hot wired fuel pump. Guess what we got in the mail? A fresh used PEM. So this might be a little later model, but it's supposed to fit this vehicle. No corrosion, that's what the guy said on eBay, and it looks pristine compared to this guy. Remember the extreme corrosion in that? So, it should be plug and play, it's not a smart module, it's just a pulse width modulated kind of smart relay box. So let's plug it in, get the scanner out, see if it runs, and if it does, it'll be a win. So I think the reason this thing looks so pristine is actually mounted on the inside of the vehicle. It has these pads, like Velcro things that we don't need because we're mounting it in the original location. <clears throat> I know there is a TSB that says to relocate the module, but it, it only says for cars with plastic fuel tank. You gotta buy like a separate harness and relocate it to the wheel well, you know, where the spare tire is. We're not going to bother. I mean, this thing lasted 15 years. If the guy wants to keep another couple years, not going to bother with that. What we will do is, however, take some silicone paste, dielectric grease, and smear it around the perimeter here to slow down the corrosion, and then maybe spray the top with whatever, WD-40 or fluid film. You don't want to coat it too much because then the heat transfer, the heat sink won't do its function, but you do want to seal around the perimeter at least. Alrighty, new module installed in the factory location. Everything's on dielectric grease, the connector. Awesome. Plug and play, right? Now, moment of truth. Plug in the scanner and fire this thing up. Alright, we're in. Engine menu. Let's just reset the codes right now. Fuel pressure system signal too high. So that's because it was hot wired. <laughs> the pressure's too high. Okay. Obviously it was the 80 PSI. Erase codes. Yes. Okay. No more check engine light. Let's read off our fuel pressure commanded. And actual custom list and we want fuel pump relay one two three four fuel pressure fuel pump duty cycle fuel temperature okay there we go 43 psi right now Fuel pump relay off. Let's fire it up. Yes. Controlling the PSI. It's at 55. 50% duty cycle. One more time. Shut it off. And start up again. Excellent. So it's happy at 55 PSI. Shut her down. Read the codes just in case. I'm sure we won't have any. That's it. Done. Woohoo! That's all I needed. eBay. It's a wonderful thing. Plug and play, no programming required. Now, let's go through the rest of the list from the dealer. Make sure this car is ready to be shipped back to Virginia. Alright, a little bonus footage. Volvo repair. Remember what the dealer quoted? That laundry list of items. Let's go through them one by one and see what they found and what I think of the situation. All right, so we fixed the fuel pressure issue for much less than $2,000. Check. 
SRS light on, $145 to diagnose. And remember the owner said that <clears throat> the airbag light was not on prior to going to the dealership. I scanned it for codes. There were two codes stored. Intermittent connection for the rear seat belt pretensioners. The right rear and the middle. Well, you know what? When they were in here messing with the fuel pump, they probably took out this section of the seat. And I guess the pretensioners are right in this cushion. So they unplugged it. Turn the key on, test the fuel pump, boom, airbag lights on. See where I'm going with this? I clear the codes, the car's fine. So they caused the problem and now they want to charge the customer to diagnose the problem. Nice. <laughs> so we can check that off the list. Rear exhaust hanger rusted off. Yeah, it's rusted off. I can tack weld it back on. No big deal. Next, upper oil trap hose split in two. Oil trap clogged. $1,645. So, I removed the plastic cover up here and already removed the hose that they're talking about. Let me uh, get it out of here and show it for you. So there's a, a vent hose, a PCV vent hose that goes from this nipple across and down there, right there, right to that whatever oil separator. I yeah, it was cracked. It came off in like ten pieces. It's plastic, brittle, oil and heat completely destroyed it. Here are the original clamps. So. Okay, yeah, the hose is busted, but the separator, I mean, there's no reason to say it's clogged. Why would they say it's clogged? Yeah, because they want to replace everything and tear the whole engine apart. Um, there's also an oil leak right here on the oil cap gasket. This thing's all dry and nasty, and it's just leaking oil all over the engine. All right, so we got some oil leaks. I went to FCP Euro, cool website, and... Got some parts. They're actually very reasonably priced. Here's the hose. OEM Volvo breather hose. This thing is made out of rubber, not plastic. So they upgraded the part. It's available. It was like, I don't know, 20 bucks. Reasonable. Brand new OEM oil filter or uh, oil cap gasket. Then Oil filter housing leaking, O-ring is pinched, $55. Yeah, it's definitely leaking. It's leaving a freaking oil spot on my floor. You can see the drips coming off the oil filter. All right, so I got genuine Volvo oil filter with the appropriate O-ring right here. So we'll just put a new oil filter on. The owner told me he just changed the oil before this trip. He put in like some really fancy synthetic oil, royal purple, whatever. So we're just putting in an oil filter and gasket. Control arm bushings blown out. Replacement and alignment, fourteen seventy. He has been driving like this for years. I already quoted him. He doesn't want to do the bushings. Relieve it. Last item. Left front outer axle boot torn, leaking grease, six hundred dollars. Well, I looked at the left outer boot it's not torn the only place it's, it was a little greasy was at this inner you know pinch clamp hose clamp so I just tightened it up with some pliers that's it done fixed it's not not a big deal so basically the only thing we have to do right now is install the new rubber hose new oil filter I even got the wrench for it this is like 50 bucks altogether and this car will be pretty much back on the road and reliable and it's treating well and it's not like it's falling apart. Because you look at that laundry list you think, oh crap, you know, a European car is getting so many problems. Not the case. I actually starting to think this thing is like magical. All it needs is some, you know, used module and some gaskets and good to go. 210,000 miles. Runs beautiful. Underneath it looks awesome. European cars don't rust that much, so I don't know. We'll do an after shot after everything's fixed. Take it for a spin, and we should be done with this thing. Alright, well, I got the oil filter housing off. The wrench worked like a charm. 
Here's a filter. Made in Korea. That doesn't belong in a Volvo. And now, looking at the housing, I think we see the problem. So, I think you put the O-ring on here, not in the groove, which is here. So we're going to take both of these O-rings off. There's one. Set it up on the tripod here. Live, live repair. Now this ring, let's get it out of here with a pick. They even have a little pick spot here. So that guy needs to go. That's all deformed, that's probably been on there forever. And he just put the O-ring in here, not correct. So two O-rings coming off. You would think two would be better than one, but not the case. All right, let's get our OEM unit. I love installing OEM parts. So this guy. Roll it on, get in the groove, in the correct groove. And that is where it's supposed to sit and see how it protrudes. That's a nice, fresh O-ring. Awesome. The filter itself, made in Austria. Oh uh, yeah, that's good stuff. So we'll pop that in. Tighten her down and there'll be one less oil leak on this car. So we're putting the final touches on the Volvo wagon. I took it for a spin, it runs beautiful, smooth as butter. This thing is a sweet highway cruiser. Uh, last thing we're gonna do is put some new spark plugs in it. These ones might be original, 212,000 miles. They say Volvo on them. They're the three prong design and the middle electrode Starts looking like a triangle. That gap is huge. So if you run worn spark plugs, you risk stressing out your ignition coils and having misfires. So we're gonna put in these sweet platinum NGKs. That's the ones the parts store had in stock. The G Power. And uh, oil leak, cleaned everything up. Now we got a new gasket on the oil filler cap. Brand new PCV hose clamped down, so this should stay clean. Yeah, this thing should be in good shape. Cruising in the Volvo. Heading up to upstate New York. Visit my folks. Figured why not take this beast for a test drive. First impressions, this is a smooth highway cruiser. Relaxed, torquey. Doesn't feel the speed at all. Yeah, we're close to 80 miles an hour. It's not even, not even flinching. So this is what this car is made for. You got the sunroof, cruise control. Very comfy. Filled it up. Took like 16 gallons. So pretty nice gas tank. Wonder what the fuel economy will be with the uh, fuel pump and the module running, you know, as it should. But I mean this. You know, people uh, knock Euro trash, but this is a solid car. I mean, it feels super smooth. Just solid. It feels like a solid car. You know, new cars are feel kind of plasticky and junky, but man, this thing, it's beefy. <laughs> I guess that's what Volvo's are known for. So as long as it runs reliably, I don't see why the guy can't keep it five, ten more years, it won't rust. He's down in Virginia. Just, you know, replaced a couple of wear and tear items here and there, but I don't know. Pretty good impressions. So, thanks a lot for watching the Volvo series. And uh, looking forward to your comments, discussions, a lot more uh, case studies to come. So, stay tuned for that. And we'll see you next time. See you guys later. Bye bye. Well, I'm basically in Ithaca. Super smooth drive almost 200 miles and it's only showing I used a quarter of a tank.
<laughs> That's amazing. This thing is definitely a highway mile eater. Made it to Ithaca, 200 miles. Beautiful, runs like a top. Lake New, fantastic highway car. Efficient, powerful. Didn't even feel the, the hills between Pennsylvania and New York. Um, what's the conclusion? Don't go to the dealer, I don't know. <laughs> With an old Volvo, they're, they're just trying to sell you a new Volvo. Uh, so, yeah, European cars, some of them are pretty solid. I mean, this thing, the owner's had it for 10 years. It hasn't given them any problems, really. This is the first kind of breakdown, and all it needed was a little module that got corroded on top of the fuel tank. So, not, not really a big deal. Uh, other cars um, would have a lot more problems during 10 years and, you know, 200,000 miles. So, you know, what? some people might ask, what's what's the grand total for, uh, for all the repairs that we did? Well, let's see. So we put in, you know, diagnosed the fuel pump module, put a new one in, then all the other laundry list items, I welded the exhaust hangers back on, um, that oil breather hose, replaced that, replaced an oil cap gasket, filter o-ring, like little stuff, put new spark plugs in it, and put new front brake pads on it. What's your guess? What's the grand total? And I filled this tank too. 800 bucks for everything, and I'm gonna drive it down to Virginia to deliver it to them next weekend. How about how's that for service? So, uh, yeah, it, you don't have to shell out major money to keep a European car running. Um, that's that's a stereotype. Maybe if it was a BMW, uh, I wouldn't be saying this, but um, the Volvo, uh, it's pretty cool. I like the, uh, the the style and how it drives. It, it'll last them. I don't know. 10 more years, it's not gonna rust, so <laughs> just keep on ticking. All right guys, uh, see you next time, bye-bye.